Welcome, this is Bloomberg Quint. Team Lee's reported a very healthy growth in the fourth quarter with revenues rising close to 20% and the bottom rise rising by a bigger margin. So what aided the numbers and how is the job environment looking right now? Talking to us here is Ravi Vishwanath, the Chief Financial Officer at the firm. Ravi, good morning and thank you so much for joining us. Um, you know, there's no doubt about the fact that it's been a very, very strong year for you guys. And uh, a lot of analysts are now starting to factoring in that uh, while we may see the same amount of growth, the operating leverage comes into play, which is why the bottom line may grow even more than your top line. Can you take us through what we can expect uh, when it comes to the upcoming financial year? Uh, well, let me... Uh... Thank you, thank you for your compliments. Yes, it has been uh, it's been a good year. There was a lot of uh, uh, of doubts in the Q in Q4, especially with the results. I mean, with the elections just on the corner, but we have but we have managed to deliver reasonably strong performance. Uh, fundamentally, as a company, we do believe that staying consistently warm is better than being hot or cold, and that is also reflected in our numbers. If you want to look at it over the past few years or over the last five years or three years since we went IPO, we've been actually maintaining a fairly steady growth both on top lines and in terms of our profitability. When we went IPO three years ago, we said we were at a 0.9% PAT and had told the investors that our goal is to take it to 3.5%, which is where most of the global companies operate at. And in line with what we had what we have told the investors, we have gone from 0.9% to about 2.2% currently. And I do believe that we are on track to get to the 3.5%, say, over the next four to five years, which is where almost the global companies operate currently. So to answer your, to, so to, so, so to answer your question, uh, while, while I would refrain from giving any guidance that would be for the next 12 months, uh, the fact is that we are on track to take it to the 3.5% net margin over the next four years. And, uh, and, and for sure, my top line growth will be between the 20 to 25% range. And the bottom line would probably keep growing at a pace faster than what my top line has been going at. Sure, Ravi, but can you also tell us a little more about how pricing has come about? What are the salary structures right now? Uh, what's the outlook going in when it comes, comes to the industry as a whole? So the industry, well, let me take the last question one, which is the industry as a whole. Uh, we are seeing a fairly strong demand for temporary staffing across the board currently. Uh, the, the number of open positions that we have is an excess of 10,000, which, which used to be about 6,000 same time last year. So, which means that there's been a 40, I mean, almost a, more than a 50% increase in the number of open positions itself. Uh, we are seeing strong demands across BFSI, across uh, uh, across fintech companies, across some of the new age companies, uh, some of the logistic players, etc. And we do believe that over the next couple of months, the traditional players like the FMCG, FMCD, retail, uh, this, and then my, our agrochemicals, etc., they should also start kicking in. So the demand seems to be good. Uh, the opportunity is large for us, as being, as you know, the market opportunity is large. So I think overall, I think we have started the year on a reasonably good, on a reasonably good wicket. So I hope to continue the good work that we've started off with through the rest of the year. And irrespective of uh, what some of these other surveys indicate about, well, the economy in general, which may also uh, perhaps indicate that there could be a little bit of slowdown in employment, uh, you would say it's safe to assume that this does not apply to some of your clients? Absolutely, 100%. See, the fact that we have, see, see one of the strategies that we adopted early on was to broad base the number of clients we have across the industry. So we today cater to over 2,000 clients, 2,000 companies in Team Leads. So at some point of time, we have somebody or the other who's actually firing. Uh, you know, even when demonetization happened, uh, while some of our competitors uh, were impacted because they were focused on too few um, industries, 
we were not impacted at that time because somebody else, I mean, some other company, I mean, some other industry actually kicked in for us and made good whatever deficits we had in certain other sectors. Sure. Ravi, a final question then. Um, when you, you do, you guys have, when you have excess cash, how is FI20 looking when it comes to deploying this cash in terms of acquisitions and perhaps to a certain extent returning to the shareholders? And is it going to look any different from what we've seen in FI19? Um, at this point of time, I would say it would be similar to what FI19 was. There are a bunch of opportunities that we are uh, discussing uh, in terms of acquisitions, which is where we believe that the cash that we have could be, um, you know, effectively utilized. Um, so, I mean, these these opportunities are at various stages of discussions. Some of them are at advanced stages. Some of them are at early stages. Um, even if 50% of them would kind of come to the signing tape, I mean, would get signed off. I would say we would have done a, re a reasonably good job in terms of utilizing whatever excess cash that we are I mean, that we currently have. Okay, Ravi, we leave it at that. Thank you so much for talking to us on Bloomberg Queen. Wish you the best for the future. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.